And good morning. Welcome to uh, ESNA Edge's live coverage of the July WASD report. And given the uh, big surprises that we've seen with the acreage report, uh, seeing obviously the big cut in soybean acres and the big increase in corn acres, we do expect today's report to be fairly volatile. Um, before we get into the details of that, we did have another report this morning, and that report was about uh, consumer price index and uh, with inflation. And CPI came in at plus 0.2 month over month, and 0.3 was expected. But the year-over-year -year number came in at 3%. This number was 4% last year. And this was uh, a little bit better than expected, but we are seeing inflation definitely being curtailed here. And that has sent the dollar noticeably lower as uh, bond yields were cut. And uh, that is certainly uh, creating an environment where we could see commodity prices do a little bit better. Along with that, crude oil is uh, noticeably higher. We've rallied about $6 a barrel over the last two weeks on a combination of things, including some lower U.S. stocks and ideas that OPEC is going to cut uh, production a little bit. And that is actually bullish for corn and soybeans. So let's go ahead and take a look at and expecting. Let's take a look at what we are expecting for today's report. And uh, for corn ending stocks, we're looking at 2.249 billion. This is not that big of a change from the last time around where we saw 2.257 billion bushels. Yes, we added a lot of acres, but we have had some weather issues uh, that likely is going to cut yields down. So really for corn right now, the market expectation is seeing things not change too much. Now, the weather has been, been a big dynamic here, and we've seen a lot of variables with this, <clears throat> and the weather has improved materially over the last, uh, let's say, two to three weeks. Um, we've had numerous rounds of storms here in eastern Nebraska, which was one of the areas that was plagued, and we have seen corn conditions actually improve a little bit. I mean, if you read today's DMO, uh, the corn conditions, soybean com conditions, charts for the last five years are all available right there for you so you can be uh, completely updated. But we are seeing corn conditions improve. We have also seen soil moisture, particularly stretching from Iowa into Illinois, improve uh, noticeably from this. So if this uh, sporadic thunderstorms can continue, that will help out conditions. This rain has not, however, been fully beneficial. Some of it has had hail and some high winds accompanying it. So it's while a better situation, it is still not a perfect situation. And as the USDA will likely cut corn yields this time around, they can certainly add those back in. Now, the next real question we have here is looking at soybean yields. And we're going to talk about soybean yields and WASDE reports uh, a little bit closer here. Now, soybean acres were cut on the acreage report and cut significantly. Typically, when we see acres get cut, that is generally good for yields because the acres that get cut typically are your lower producing acres. Now, looking here, this is the typical change in yields on the July WASD. So if we go back to 2019, they cut them a bushel an acre. We go back here to 2012, they cut them three and a half bushels an acre roughly and a couple of other smaller cuts. So over the last 20 years, they have cut yields on the July report four times. They have left them unchanged 16 times. So I do think we are going to see a little bit of a cut here. It is not going to be a big cut. It might be maybe a quarter of a bushel an acre, half a bushel, some fractional amount it is entirely possible today, and that will tighten up soybean ending stocks. But what to gather from the soybean chart here that you're looking at, notice August, September, October, November, and even stretching into December, we see ending stock, or we see actually yields going higher. So it is entirely conceivable if they cut soybean yields today, we are going to see those yields get put back if the weather pattern has in fact changed. We have moved into a much more of a La Nina type situation which does make it easier 
for uh, precipitation to come in in North America. However, the current weather pattern is creating some ridges and some blocking patterns that isn't allowing for a parade of storms where we see good regular consistent rains across the Corn Belt. What we are seeing is, in fact, rather sporadic uh, and rather intense thunderstorms producing the moisture, which isn't ideal, but from where we were, it is still an improvement. And going back to the report, for soybean ending stocks, last time we were at 350 million bushels. Right now, the average estimate is about 200 million. That would account only for the change in acres and really leaving yields unchanged. If we shave yields and maybe add a little bit to the crush numbers, that could potentially bring us down to a number that is going to be noticeably tighter. So there is some potential here for that end of the report to be bullish. Now, going back to the corn situation, so far, if you believe in the rule of threes, meaning good news shows up in threes and bad news shows up in threes, with the corn, we've had bad news for the bears, meaning we have seen acres increased. We have had bad news for the bears, seeing uh, the weather improve. The third item on the list that could be bad news for the bears and good news, uh, bad news for the bulls and good news for the bears would be if we were to see exports cut. Export sales have been very, very choppy. We haven't seen any real good improvements from the week period that we're coming out of. And also export sales for new crop, while lower prices have allowed them to improve a little bit, we're still running behind. And with that being the case, we could certainly uh, find ourselves in a situation where if they cut uh, exports, which are, right now they have a very stout number, that's something that could add to that ending stocks number and create some pressure. For total wheat ending stocks right now, the uh, survey is at 570 million. Uh, currently, we're looking at, uh, you know, last time around about 562. So we're not looking for any big surprises this time around with the wheat situation. Kansas City wheat is going to probably finish, uh, winter wheat is going to finish with uh, good to excellent conditions right at 40%, which puts them actually not as bad as, uh, you know, we had been earlier in the year and puts them closer to the middle. Um, looking at corn conditions right now, good to excellent is running at 55% good to excellent. The five-year ending average for corn conditions is 59% good to excellent. So there is the potential for us to get yields back. We're not going to see those record numbers at the USDA through at throughout, but we are going to be able to see the potential for yields to be a little bit higher. So those are the big problems that we need to be concerned about with corn and soybeans. I don't expect them to really do too much with the soybean exports. But if we look at the uh, corn exports right now, we are, you know, we're at 2.1 million and uh, or 2.1 billion. That number could easily be shaved, you know, 100 or 200 which that would go right back into ending stocks, and that would certainly create, um, you know, a more burdensome balance sheet. Moving on to the cotton, uh, cotton ending stocks right now are expected to be unchanged. We have seen uh, a decent pickup in the cotton market the last two or three days. The stock market has done noticeably better. We've shaken off a little bit of bearishness. And we have seen cotton try to move out of this range that it's been in for the last eight months. We are going to need to see something materially change, most likely with the supply side. I don't know that we're going to see the export or the consumption side pick up that much. The reopening in China has been much slower than expected, and that has kept commodities fairly tame. If we begin to see the reopening process in China improve a little bit, that is certainly something that would be beneficial to cotton, which would be good news for that particular commodity. It would be bad news, however, for crude oil, which had seen prices hover right around $70 a barrel, and now suddenly we're pushing closer to $75, $77 as ideas that we're going to see OPEC cut production. And along with that, we are going to see... Um, uh, some increased potential increases in demand. 
uh, weekly crude stocks are noticeably lower, and that did create a little bit of market pressure. I'm going to go ahead and switch screens here. Let's see. And we'll take a quick look at the markets here before we get the report. And looking right now, July corn, which is basically off the board, it's at 558 and a half. That's down 13 and a quarter. New crop is really what today is going to be all about. December new crop at 496 and a half is down a nickel. November beans are up 10 and three quarters coming into the report. And looking at wheat, again, a bit of a mixed picture with Chicago wheat under a little bit of pressure. Uh, and the other two not really doing too much. As far as the Ukrainian wheat deal, that is expected to expire, uh, I believe, on July 15th or July 17th, coming up here shortly. Thus far, the Kremlin has had no indication that they are going to make any material changes on this or do anything uh, to extend this deal. And that will create problems for the Ukrainians. It could also easily lead to Russia continuing to dump wheat into the marketplace. Both countries need hard currency. The easiest way for Russia or the Ukraine to generate hard currency is to sell commodities in the marketplace, which for the Ukraine means corn and wheat, and for, the, for Russia that means wheat and crude oil. Uh, we do expect the Ukrainian crops to suffer noticeably. Um, number of acres planted is going to be down significantly. Also, uh, you know, the maintenance of the crop, fertilizing and things like that are probably going to be a little bit difficult. But again, right now the market is very much a hand-to-mouth operation that really doesn't uh, try to forecast things going forward. That's why we've seen wheat prices so depressed. As more information becomes more available and it makes a material difference, we could see prices strengthen noticeably. One thing for corn and soybeans, if you're fortunate enough to have early corn and early soybeans, you could see uh, some particularly good basis situations right now as supplies are tightening up. I'm going to go ahead and switch to the report page now, and we're coming up on release. And we're about 30 seconds from getting the report. The big number again today, I think, is going to be the soybean ending stocks number. And if that's sub 200, that will definitely be bullish for the soybeans. Corn ending stocks, um, if it's uh, a surprise one way or the other, that could move the corn market. All these markets are fairly oversold coming into this report. So there is, you know, some energy there to, uh, to push things higher. And we are at 11 o'clock here and the USDA is being slow. And the markets are, soybeans are currently down about 14 cents. And uh, September corn is currently down about nine and a half. So is the rest of the corn. And there we're getting our numbers at 22 spots, 62. Not too big of a surprise. They only increased uh, those ending stocks fractionally. Corn exports were left alone. Corn yields at 177 spot five, about as expected. Moving on to the soybean, soybean ending stocks only cut to 300. This would have been, this is a bearish surprise. Most people thought we would see again a number closer to 200. I figured we would see it probably a little bit underneath 200, but we'll have to break down the report in detail to see what's going on. Soybean exports were cut though. That accounts for 125 of that cut from 1975 to 1850. Cotton ending stocks actually raised. We're looking, you know, right around three spot five. We're now back to three spot eight, which is going to be a little bit of a weight, I think, on the cotton market. Moving on to the wheat ending stocks, we're at 592. The street was looking for 570. It was 562 last time around, and exports were left alone. So not any big surprises there. Moving on to um, the world numbers here. We look at the global numbers, world corn ending stocks at 3.14, right in line with expectations. Uh, soybean uh, ending stocks for new crop at 121, again, right in line with expectations, but they did tighten up a little bit, uh, most likely based on the U.S. production. 
looking at South American production, uh, Brazil corn at 129, right in line, and uh, corn production, soybean production for new crop at 163. 156 was the uh, number for last year. So that 163 number coming out of Brazil, that number is a little bit bearish as, again, we are seeing a monster crop coming out of South America. Taking a look at the charts here and seeing what is, in fact, going on. Let me get this out of the way. As you can see, we had the nice run up with the weather. Oh, then it rained and down we came hard and in a hurry. And now we're testing right along the support levels. So while it is bearish right now at the moment, we aren't really trading any differently than we were a week and a half ago. And we're going to be right back on the source of what's going to happen with the weather and what is going to happen with exports. Moving on to the soybeans. The soybeans uh, had outperformed a little bit. You can see here is the acreage report from the 30th when we spiked higher. Uh, today we're seeing trade on both sides. Um, seeing a little bit of pressure, obviously, with the higher ending stocks. Where these markets finish up today are going to be a lot more important than what we're doing right now. There's a lot of algorithmic and computerized trading that goes on immediately upon the release of this. These reports are complicated and it does take time for people to digest them and adjust their positions. So if we could see a recovery in the soybeans as perhaps people aren't necessarily buying the yield numbers or they're not necessarily buying uh, the export numbers, that could allow the market to move a little bit higher. And looking at the wheat market, the wheat market has uh, punching a hole through support here as we're down. Uh, we're down noticeably. You're down about 23 and a half on September in Chicago. Um, again, no big surprises, but there was absolutely no bullish news. And when we see corn getting sold, very often we can see the wheat come under pressure as well. So that covers all of the major items that we have today. Um, Ashley, did we have any questions from anyone? I do not see any questions in the chat. So your key takeaways from this report, corn ending stocks, despite the increase in acres, the cut in yields uh, did bring the market under uh, a little bit of pressure as basically ending stocks were unchanged. For soybeans, a surprise in much higher ending stocks, uh, soybean yields were actually, uh, let's see what they did with soybean yields. Soybean yields were left unchanged, which again, not too big of a surprise. There were some ideas that we could see a cut, but they did not touch the soybean yields. We did see exports being cut, which is a little bit surprising. We did not really see, I don't think we increased the crush numbers. I'll have to look through the report to get all the details on that. But again, not uh, not anything, not good news for the grain market in general here. We will see some pressure. And we'll see this corn export number remains, again, something that I'm worried about. We're at 2.1 million. I really think we're going to see that number probably end up being close to 1.9 million. So this provides a little bit of a jolt to the soybean market, weighing on the corn market. And I suspect by the time we start tomorrow, we'll be back to the beat goes on with concern about exports and how the weather performs. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Make sure to listen to our podcasts every day as this covers all the markets uh, in depth. And along with it, we do have, you know, obviously the DMOs and read and follow those because we are still in a period of volatility and the market will likely give us another chance and another bounce before things uh, get completely settled out. This is Sterling Smith from Omaha, Nebraska, wishing everybody a great day. 